Sounds True presents The Three Commitments, Session 2, Shamatha Meditation Instruction with Pema Chodron. This morning, I want to present the basic meditation practice. The other day I asked someone, what is the basic meditation practice here at Kampo Abbey? And her reply was, it's all over the map. There, like, isn't one. So I thought it was time to have a basic meditation practice that we agreed on. And then our meditation instructors can work with us with this basic practice and introduce new students when they come to this basic practice and then you can develop it further. So you all have a handout which gives the general idea. It starts with posture. I'm going to go over that first. Then the object of meditation, which is the breath, and then how we work with the thoughts that inevitably arise over and over again in our minds. And I said a few words about the view. And this morning also, I don't want to talk too much, but I would like to make the practice relevant to the topic of yarne. What is the helpfulness of this practice in contacting and beginning to be able to relax and open to the fundamental ambiguity so that this reaction against our fundamental true condition of impermanence and the always changing, the dynamic, alive quality, that our relationship with that is one of relaxing rather than running away. So how is the practice a support in that? So I'd like to point that out as I go through the technique. So let's begin with the posture. And as I say this, if you could try to take this posture, let me go through it first and then I'll ask you to take the posture. We're going to start usual uh, practice period technique that's used in Datun, which is that at least once during a morning session and probably more and once during the afternoon session the gecko will walk and look at posture and correct the posture. So the six points of good posture as introduced by Chogyam Trumpa Rinpoche were uh, the seat, the legs, the torso, the hands, the eyes, and the mouth. And as it says on the back of the sheet, when you begin your session, you run through the six points of posture and you sort of set yourself up at the beginning of a session. And the purpose of, uh, of this particular posture is to become comfortable and relaxed when you meditate. So in terms of the seat, the seat should be flat. Now, the exception to this can be that you can put a cushion under your buttocks and slightly lift the buttocks. So you can be slightly tilted forward. And uh, I'm sure all of you probably have been meditating long enough that you have your posture the way you like it. And in general, we won't mess with you too much. But in terms of the seat being flat, what's being looked for here is that you're not tilted to the right, that's the left, or to the left, or to the back. Because when you're out of alignment like this, or like this, or backward like that, it causes a lot of pain in the neck, in the shoulders, and in the back it shows up as discomfort in the body. So the idea of flat seat or slightly tilted forward is to make you comfortable, help you be comfortable. And the idea is to 
get used to a comfortable posture so that you don't have to wiggle around and keep moving around during a sitting period. In our tradition, we do allow people to move, uh, but the less moving, the better. And when you do move, you do it slowly and not a lot of continual wiggling. So that's the kind of thing the gecko will be looking for. And they'll also be looking for whether you are tilted to the right or to the left. And if they see that you're out of alignment in some way, they will come and touch your shoulder and tell you what they see. Or if you don't have a problem with hands-on, they'll actually adjust your posture if they're trained in doing that, such as Riemann is. So check your seat when you sit down. Then the legs. Now, the legs should be folded in front of you. So if you're used to sitting in a different posture, and this is the result of many years of finding you can't sit with your legs in front of you, this could be a discussion that you could have with Riemann and, of course, also with your meditation instructor. But in general, the posture is one that your legs are in, folded in front of you. Now, I was used to have tremendous pride in my sitting posture because my legs fold very easily and I sat completely flat with no pain in my legs, my, in my full lotus, and all of this was very natural to me. I didn't have to work at it, and I was so comfortable in that position. And then uh, pride cometh before a fall, and now I have a bad back, and I can't sit that way anymore to my sorrow. So now I can also speak for the people of the chair. So in terms of your legs when you're sitting in the chair, the seat is flat. You don't lean back against the back of the chair. If you have to, again, because of bad back or something, talk again, to your meditation instructor about this, or with Riemann as head of the sitting practice group. So you sit upright in the chair, and your feet are placed on the floor. So it causes really a lot of pain if the feet are just barely touching or even off the floor. Somehow, if you need to raise your feet up by putting something under them because the chair is too high, but your feet should be flat and then you can sit upright. If you're sitting on the cushion, then you can have the left leg in front, the right leg in front. You can do various things in terms of where your feet are placed. But the general idea is just to have them folded comfortably in front of you and no contortions of trying to you know, go into full lotus or something like this. And it's actually interesting since bodies differ. Or it's a very individual thing. Experiment with your right leg being in front or with your left leg being in front. But the main thing I'm pointing to here is that you don't start one way and then keep fidgeting, keep changing your legs, put them in front, then put them in back, continually moving them around. It can be a, a way that people fidget a lot with changing their leg position. So there's only one resting posture, and this was invented not by Chogyam Trungpa Rinpoche, but by the students, and he approved that we could do it. So it's hard to do this in the chair, but basically if you're sitting on the gamden, and by the way, the reason the gamden was invented was so that people could sit flat but low rather than in a chair. And if their knees were higher than their hips, it causes enormous stress on the back and shoulders. And so the idea was that you could lift the gobden up and uh, make it high enough so that your knees would go down. So it's very important that the knees are not higher than the hips. And this is, again, for reasons of comfort. So the resting posture is one of you lift the knees up and you can hold them. So you don't slouch over. You sit upright, but you hold onto the knees. So that's the one actually resting posture. But the idea is to try to make